come here, come here, come here. Oh. Hi, I'm Nicole McGinney. Uh, this is my husband, Phil. Our daughter, Abby. When she was born, she failed all three of her newborn hearing screenings. They did one each day that we were in the hospital to check her. And um, they weren't super concerned. They said that due to fluid in the ears or, or what have you, and they told us to do a follow-up. Which is what we did at about a month old, but she failed that one as well. So the next step was a third test, and we were told by that audiologist that she passed for the most part. The report goes to the state, Abby can hear, you know, fine and dandy, everything's great. As time went on, you just kind of pick up on these little things that, you know, if she doesn't startle, could sleep through anything. The, the dog barking wouldn't really bother her. So I guess at about nine or 10 months old, we were standing in the kitchen and she was running around the island and I grabbed one of our giant stainless steel cooking pots, held it over my head and dropped it on our tile floor was so loud that the dog went running for cover and Abby didn't move, didn't move. Um, so that was kind of the aha moment at home for we, we have something going on. That's when we found Dr. Bahadori and Dr. Murray's practice um, through Inova. We scheduled an appointment with their audiologist, Dr. Sophie. And she said, well, you can't get a proper reading uh, on a 10 month old, 11 month old, if they're not fully sedated. Okay. So we went in to Inova Fairfax, met with a, a great group of people. The anesthesiologists were fantastic. Dr. Ashley Greenwood from pediatrics was there. Ashley basically told us that there were no responses in either ear to the limits of their, their equipment. You hear profoundly deaf, and you just start th thinking about what's going to happen to your child. Dr. Murray and his team really did an excellent job, kept communicating with us through the surgery. Recovery was great. Abby was activated a month later, so June of, of 2017, the cochlears were actually turned on. and. The response was immediate. Okay, here we go. She's blanking. Okay. Oh. Oh. Was that too loud? Oh. She cried when they were activated, which is a very common response for the younger kids. They, they can't fully process it, so the, the aha and the smiles typically don't happen in the younger ones. But it was the best cry that I think we've ever seen because we knew they were working. We were just relieved that, you know, there was something there, that it worked, and... We love you. Hi, I love you. <laughs> love you, yeah. We basically have programs that we can, can increase ourselves, which we do over the course of a couple of weeks or a month, and then we go back and see our audiologist, Dr. Dr. Schuster, um, and she, increases the volume, increases the range of, of the implants themselves, what Abby can hear. Yeah, Amelia's great with her. Um, I feel like we're getting so well taken care of. She's in speech therapy and we also have a therapist that's helping her with sign because we want her to have both sign and English. And she is working with her um, with little sounds with different animals and she's starting to understand the difference um, in the sounds. Like she'll have a cow and a dog and she'll moo and she'll reach for the cow. In order for these children to be really successful, we have to have a whole team working together. We have to have the ear, nose, and throat physician. We have to have the audiologist. We have to have a speech language pathologist. Uh, there are professionals in the schools, so deaf educators, social workers, counselors, other family members. It takes really a whole team to, to make this work. So here we are four, almost five months post-activation, 
and Abby's turning to sounds. <laughs> Abby's turning to her name. Uh, Abby is playing with the dog and dancing around when the dog is barking and absolutely loves it. That she thinks it's hilarious. She loves and it. And it's, it's so fun to watch her. It's, it's amazing because, again, it's just confirmation that it's, it's working. It's really cool when she's like sitting in her high chair eating and she hears the garage door open, you know, daddy's coming home. You know, she turns and looks and she gets all excited and she wouldn't have been able to hear that. Something that a, a parent of a hearing child would probably not even pay one bit of attention to just stops you in your tracks because it's, it is nothing short of incredible. She's gonna be happy and healthy and... Can do absolutely anything she wants to do. Yeah.